This is Andrew from craftybeetroot.com. Today I want to talk about my shadow blade that I created. Um, obviously this is from Dota. For those of you not familiar with the game, it's a recipe that you can purchase that when combined gives you the shadow blade that allows you to vanish um, and escape. And However, I kind of like the looks of it, so I thought, why not try and make it? So the first thing to do when starting a build like this is you want to make some digital blueprints. Obviously in the game it's a very low resolution picture, um, a cartoon at that, so there's always going to be some level inter of interpretation. Fortunately there's a few images online that allowed this to happen, um, and then I took those ideas and brought them into Inkscape. It's a free software that can be used to create blueprints, and so that's what I used. And to do this you just create layers on top of layers. Once I was happy with the overall look, I then printed out at the appropriate scale. To scale the weapon, I used the grip of the weapon. I, in my mind, this weapon was a single hand weapon. I mean, you can see here that this scale ended up working out quite well. Um, it's a single hand weapon. And in that scale, the whole thing proportions out quite well. And although not realistic to any kind of historical weapon, um, has actually quite a nice feel to it. Not that I know anything about weapons. So after the blueprints, the next step is to figure out the material you're going to make. Um, similar to my link dagger that I've created before, um, I wanted to use an EVA foam. For that, I chose four mats. Um, I had some lying around from a previous project, so this project was going to be a cheap build um, using whatever supplies I had lying around. So once I had the shape cut out in the initial foam format, the next thing I wanted to do was reinforce it. Obviously, if I just was using a piece of foam format with this kind of thinness, um, it would have been quite floppy. So to reinforce this, I used a fiberglass rod. Fiberglass rod was then hidden between two thin layers of craft foam, put on the either edge to not only build out the thickness to what I thought would look uh, realistic or look plausible. For the handle, I used two layers of the foam formats. Um, the same with the end cap and also the guard. And these were all built up in different sections. Um, because of the shaping required, I wanted to keep the guard separate as well as these little feathers coming off the back. Um, it would allow it easier to be shaped and then when it came together it would be easier to hide those seam lines because those seam lines would be there in theory. So you're not trying to hide them, you can in fact then enhance them. While I was shaping this I used uh, various um, different techniques. I used a sharp knife to cut the overall shapes and then I sanded the rest down. Uh, until I was happy with the overall shapes. Because all of these mix, um, that was also done using the wood burning tool. I put some texture to the wood hand grip using that wood burning tool again. And once I was happy with the overall shape, sanding it down and cutting it and sanding it, I then primed the whole thing with some house paint. Now the reason why I used some house paint is because it was based, it's a latex based paint. And I know a lot of people that are using foam particularly like to use latex. The latex gives it a lot of durability and gives it a nice thickness. While I didn't have the ability to spray that thickness, spray that paint on, um, I did find that I could sand it lightly. If I went too aggressive with the sanding, it would peel off some of the latex and then I'd have to start the process again. But after a few coats and a few light sands, I was happy with the overall base coat. And the first thing I did was I painted the whole thing in metallic purple. And for the record, this was the only thing that I purchased for this build. The metallic purple was to basically give that implication that it was made out of purple metal. No idea what that metal would be, um, but that was the idea behind it. Normally in a typical sword build, you do a base coat of silver, and that would be what you would want to come through, um, because most builds are based in real metal. So the purple metal was the base coat. And then I tried a technique where I did some masking with some toothpaste. So these grooves from the base purple paint that I was going to use. That base purple paint was going to be sprayed on, so I knew the toothpaste masking would allow me to protect some of these inner gouges from being hit with that purple. And so then when I washed the paint off, it would reveal that purple underneath. Didn't quite work as planned, and so I ended up having to do a lot of work with dry brushing afterwards. Um, but it did work in some of these grooves and you can see that. So after I'd done that basic base coat, I then had to mask it off and paint the guard. 
Now, the artwork suggests that this is gold. Well, I didn't have any gold paint and I didn't want to go and buy some, so I actually spray painted it an aluminum color or a silver color, basically. And the goal there was to make it metallic because I did have some rough and buff gold leaf. And this would allow me to go in with the rough and buff and instead of changing an opaque or a flat color into a metallic color, I would be changing a silver color into a gold color. In my mind, and in reality, it worked out pretty well. That happened a lot easier than going from an opaque color. Um, and if I figured some of the silver comes through, well, it's just basically going to imitate that wearing off the gold and some of it being shinier than others. As this experiment, um, it did work out quite well. Uh, I did go through and all of the gold was then applied to all the different guard areas that it required. So the final thing I needed to do before I went on to the final weathering was I had to input the two rivets. The two rivets were going to be gold. And so I simply drilled the holes and then I had a plug cutter drill bit and I used that on the phone. I wasn't sure if that was going to work, but that did save me a lot of time in having to cut or create my own kind of circle cutter out of some pipe or some other means. Um, these were then glued and inserted after being painted the appropriate gold color. Uh, and then the whole thing was ready to be clear coated and then the weathering. I wanted to go for a pretty rough weathering look on this. Uh, as you can see, I've gone for a lot of dings in it to make it look like it's been really battle worn or in the middle of a battle. Um, so I, came, I went in with a light brown, a dark brown and a black. These I washed on and made quite a light wash and then I washed them off. Um, in some areas I had to go in a bit heavier with the black to cover some of the painting misnomers that um, got through some of the spray painting and through some of the masking. Um, but overall we ended up with quite a nice looking blade. The final thing I did is I went back in with some dry brushing. And again I want to emphasize that purple metallic undertone. So that purple metallic paint is what I used for the dry brushing. I then ended up caving and going in with that platinum that I've used before. Um, just to kind of highlight it even further, the, the metallic nature of it. Because in the, all the images, the blade is the same color as the handle. Once I was happy with the final look, it was then set aside to dry. Um, I did clear coat some of this, but for the most part, the weathering I left as it was, is this isn't going to be used or taken anywhere. Um, so this here is Shadow Blade, made with some old scrap a head lying around. Um, in a few minutes of my time. If you want to follow more of these builds, please go to craftybeetroot.com. Um, I will have a full write-up on this eventually, and the blueprints should be available. Thank you.